do how to make these temple string arts. This is the St. George Temple and the Salt Lake Temple. A lot of the tips and the things that I say will apply to any string art, but I'll give you some specific instructions and tips on how to make these two. I think it's a really great way to bring thoughts of the temple into your home. Here are the supplies that you'll need for the string art. You need a piece of wood. This is 12 by 18. It's about three quarters of an inch thick. The nail will probably go through about a quarter of an inch. You just gotta make sure that it's thick enough for that. This is sanded plywood and I cut it up into smaller pieces. And you'll need stain, finish, paintbrush, sandpaper, and a rag to apply the finish. This is a template of the temple, uh, rulers, masking tape, paper cutter, pins, scotch tape, nails. So I have um, one inch wire nails. I got the zinc so that they would be more shiny. It goes by ounces. I did use about a whole four ounces on both the Salt Lake and the St. George Temples. One and three quarters inch clothespins, a hammer, you know those pliers. This is the thread. So I got Aunt Lydia's classic 10 crochet thread. You can get different sizes if you want to. You will use about a hundred yards on each one. A pen, it needs to be a pen that you can take apart so you can take, apart, take off both ends. And then if you're doing the Salt Lake, some gold thread and this is just the DNC floss and they had some in gold. That is what you'll need. The first step is to put your template together. Here is the Salt Lake Temple. I'm going to cut, just line it up with the very bottom of where my lines are. This one I needed to do it on three different papers. They're not necessarily printed in exactly the same place. So you're just you're trying to line up the lines. Here is the Salt Lake Temple. The template can be confusing because it overlaps quite a bit. Just barely want to put on two pages. So just make sure you have three windows going vertically down. Now I need my board. I put three coats of penetrating stain on it and then three coats of polyacrylic on it. Decide which way you want to put it. And then you're going to put the template on there how you want to put it on. You can center it exactly um, on there. I am actually going to put some felt flowers at the bottom. So I'm going to push mine up a little bit further than it's not going to be centered vertically, but I'll center it horizontally. You can think about if you want to put some vinyl letters at the bottom, like saying established in 2009 or whenever you were married, or you might want to put some vinyl letters up at the top or something. If you don't want anything on, then just center it on your board. I'm just going to measure and make sure it's straight. I'm going to use two rulers so that I can measure both of them at both ends at the same time. Measure my sides. Just make sure that you're measuring and lining up the actual lines of the template, not the edge of your paper. Just put masking tape around it to hold it in place. Then take another thumbtack. Remember where you start. And you're going to go all the way around, poking a hole. You don't have to poke super hard. You're just poking a hole. Make sure it's right in the center of the dot. You want your lines to be straight as possible. So this is the beginning of making them straight as possible. You're getting that coat right in the middle of the dot. Okay, after you go all the way around, just kind of look at it. You can feel it and make sure you got every dot. I like to pick up a corner and kind of look and make sure that I can see them before I take the whole thing off because you're really not going to be able to get it back on where it was. Okay, take it off and you can see all of the dots. 
when I was looking at tutorials, there were some that left the template on and then just nailed their actual nails into the dots. And But then I didn't really like that way of doing it because then you have to tear up your template and it looked like a pain to me to try to tear everything off when you already had the nails in it. Plus, I want to be able to keep the template so as I'm doing my string, especially on parts where um, like, especially like up here, where it could be a little bit confusing once you, when you only have the nails and you don't have any lines. It might be a little confusing to know exactly what you're supposed to do with the yarn. So I wanted to be able to keep my template to be able to look at it and see the shape that I'm supposed to be making with my yarn. So that's why I did it that way. And I know that the holes are just a little bit hard to see, but you, you can see them well enough to be able to nail into it. I made a temple and I did not realize how important it was to get the nails in straight until I was doing the string that it was getting even less straight and it was looking horrible so I got to the end I was all finished I'm so excited except it really did not look that great because the line the nails did not go in straight and the lines weren't straight and the windows were all different sizes because they were not straight. So, Tyler and I came up with a plan and it worked pretty well. So, seems a little bit strange, but this is our makeshift way to make them straight. Two clothespins. So I'm gonna take you how, show you how to take these two clothespins and make a little guide so that your nails can be straight. We're going to take it apart. Take both sides, and I'm going to line them up, so I just have two of the same side, they're all the same. The part that I'm using, where is it? The part that I'm using is this little tiny one. So I've got three bumps. I'm using this little tiny one in the middle. So I'm going to tape them together. Line those tiny bumps up. And then tape them together. I'm going to tape both ends. I just took a piece of tape. I just put it kind of on the wood. And I tried to push it into that hole as much as possible flatten it out. So I'm just making that hole a little bit smaller so that the nail will be in there a little bit tighter. Now I have my two ends taped together. So what I'm going to do is push them together so now I've got this longer hole. The reason why I tape two together is because then it's just taller so it holds more of the nail in place. So that's going to be your guide for the ones that are far enough apart. I'm starting with St. George and again I have my template handy because sometimes some of my little holes are a little bit hard to see. So if I can look at my template um, and then I can kind of see, okay this is about where the hole should be and then sometimes it's easier to find it if I can't find them. Also, sometimes maybe a missed one, so then you can see on here where that hole was, where that dot was supposed to be if you missed them. So you're taking your guide and make sure like the same ends are together. You're going to want to hold it on this end because you can hold it on this end then it will fall apart. So hold it on this end when you hold it together. When you're nailing, start on the inside. Take a nail. And then you're gonna hold these together and then stick the nail through the little slot. Put my nails all the way through. Then I'm gonna take the point of the nail and stick it into my hole. And then I, I'm gonna keep my, my pointer finger on the top of the nail, kind of pushing it so that it doesn't move out of my hole. So I'm pushing that down and then I slide the clothespins down. So whichever hand you're going to hammer with, you want to hold the clothespins with the other hand. So if you can, if you have space, you just hold it right on the edges of the nails, but sometimes you can't do that because there's other nails. 
So then if you hold it there, it'll go pretty well. If you hold it here, it's just gonna come right out. Hold that tight and then make sure when you're hammering that you're going straight up and down, not to the side at all, but you're going straight up and down as much as possible. Don't trust this completely. When you put it in, you still have to make sure that it's straight because it does have a little bit of wiggle. Make sure it's straight, and then as you're hammering, watch it. And if you if you start to if it starts to slip or it starts to open up or move or whatever, then stop and try to get it straighter. Before. I'm gonna hammer them in until there is about an eighth of an inch up. The nail is one inch, and this is half an inch so I want I don't want to go all the way through if it's not exactly straight just leave it because the thing that I realized when I did the one that I messed up on is if you if you like hammer it or try to push it to get it straight then it's making a bigger hole and then it wiggles and then it pulls it way out once you put the string on the way that you're gonna do it with the needle nose pliers if it gets too tight or you should do it with the guide then I'm going to take the needle nose pliers in your non-dominant hand. Again, put the point right in your dot and then hold the needle nose pliers on it and you want to lay them flat. Don't lay the top of it flat, you want to lay this part on flat. I'm kind of in the middle so I want to lay the handle flat on there. Squeeze it together and really keep it squeezed while you nail start in here, come out on my windows, and then go all the way around. We are ready to do the nails for the Salt Lake Temple now. I'm just going to start here and do my windows coming this way and then flip it around, start here, do my windows going that way. I've done half of the Salt Lake Temple. I'm just gonna record doing the second half so that you can see the order that I went in. Mainly, I am trying to do it in a way that I can use these guides most of the time because it really makes it easier to keep them straight. So I only want to use the pliers when it's super tight and definitely necessary. Up here, these were really tight because I'm doing the spires. So those I did have to use the pliers.
nails are complete. Now we are ready to put the string on. This is a little trick I saw that seriously a lifesaver. So I got a pen and it has to be a pen that you can take the guts out of. So take the top off and take the ink out. I'm gonna, I don't need the cap or the ink. I will need this little piece. And then I take this end off. I had to use my teeth to get it off. Okay, so I don't need that little end cap. So keep this little part. You take the end of your string and you're gonna thread it through. If you have a hard time getting it through, I have tied it onto a nail and then it gives it weight to be able to get it down better. Okay, so I have it through that main part, and then I take the end cap part that the ink comes out of, thread it through there, and then attach those back together. So that helps to get in between these, and it, I think. I haven't tried it a lot with my fingers, but I think it probably saves your fingers from all of that contact with the top of the nail. And it seems to stay better. I've tried it with my fingers a little bit and it doesn't stay as well. So I really like this way of doing it, but you don't have to do it that way. You can just thread it with your fingers. And I'm gonna try to find an inconspicuous-ish spot. So kind of right here. I think would be good to tie it off. Now, honestly, my least favorite part is the tying. So, I am gonna try to do this in one sweep and so that I don't have to tie it off more than once. Um, when I was watching videos and looking at different things, they said tie it off every once in a while, just so it doesn't unravel, but it's not like, I mean, if it starts to unravel, you stop it before it unravels really that much. So it's not like it's gonna unravel forever. If you leave it, I mean, any time that you're gonna have to leave and you're not gonna be holding it, then you have to tie it off so that it doesn't unravel. But if you can just sit and do it in one sitting, then I don't, I, when I did the St. George one, I just did it all at once. I tied it on one side and then I went to the other side of the nail, tied it, and then I tied it on the other side. I went back and forth a few times. And then the last time I tied it twice on that side. Whenever I tie it off, it's easier, I have found, if you come back to the same one and, and tie it off with this string. Otherwise, you kind of have to like feed it through the strings that are going on. This way it's just easier if you come back to this one, if you can. The template is especially nice on these that go up and down and then on my spires, because they're kind. it can be a little bit confusing as to what you're doing, so keep that with you. I kind of know just because I made it. So you're going to start and you got to go around in the entire thing first, okay? And every time you get to a new nail, you've got to go all the way around that nail and then to the next one. And you want the string to be on the outside of the temple, on these outlines. Sometimes, especially if it's tight, you kind of pull the pin top away from it so this point can go in between the nails and then you don't always have to do this but if there's not very much space and then you pull it the other way so it can go in between those two nails sometimes you can just keep it flat like this when there's not very much going on or when they're not very tight together, but right here, I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to have to go kind of back and forth because then it's not the whole top that's having to go in between the nails. It's just the corner 
that has to go in between the nails. And my other hand is holding on to the string, pulling it tight. So if I just let this go, it's not going to be very tight through my pen. So I've got to hold it tight with my other hand. You don't want it to be loose going on there. Because these are so tight, I'm going to go on that side of this spire and then on the outside. So then I've got a little bit of space right there and then I'm going to go back. Because otherwise I kind of lost the spire there. And you start to see as you're going how, like I was saying, how important it is that they're straight. Mm -hmm. Outside, and you actually have uh, two different options. If you want to, you could just do the outline and not fill in with the kind of web kind of look where it's back and forth. You could just do the outline. So if you're going to just do the outline, you're going to do this differently than I'm doing right now. You're going to have to tie it off here for this outline. And then when I do the outline of my windows, I'm just going to go back and forth just on the same string because I'm going to cover it up later. But if you want to just do the outlines, you're going to have to outline the windows. So you would tie it off here and then you would tie it off for each individual window. You'd have to start a new thread, go around, tie it off, start a new thread, go around, tie it off, go around. So you have to tie it off any time that you're going to not have string in between them. So you can do that look if you want to, um, but I don't want to, so I'm going to keep going. So then we're just going to the windows that are on the inside and we have to do the string on the inside now because that's technically the outside of our pattern. So the string, you go around each nail, and then you go on in the inside, okay? And then because, like I said, I'm going to be going all over the place tons and tons of times, I'm going to be covering that up. So it really doesn't matter that I'm just keeping the same string. When I went around, it kind of got stuck a little bit up on the top of the nail. So really watch for that so that you can push it back down. Like you can just immediately push it back down and it's no big deal. Um, and if you don't see it and you have to do it later, it's fine, but it can make it kind of loose. So just watch and make sure that the thread went all the way around and that it went down all the way around, underneath the top of the nail. Okay, so right here, I stopped right here, but I need to go to here. So I'm just gonna kind of bounce off of a different one and then go to where I need to go. in the windows. So now I'm going to fill in all of my space. Remember not to fill in your windows. Pay attention to where your windows are and don't fill those in, but you're filling in everything else. So what I want to do is I'm going to fill in about the same amount all over. And when you do it, you want to go around, like I said, go around it. Now, for instance, if I am, so I'm going to go around it once. If I'm going kind of the opposite way, it already went around it once, so I don't need to go around again. 
But if I'm gonna be going back over here, I probably wanna go around again to keep it nice and secure. So you wanna make sure that the string has gone all the way around it once, just to make sure that it's nice and secure. third one I've made and one thing that I have noticed is that the space kind of right here in between the two nails there's always kind of this little space right here right by the nails is harder to fill in so there's two things that I'm going to do to help that fill in and this is really only if you are planning on filling yours in pretty thick about how I did it so if not, it doesn't really matter because you'll have a lot of space. The first thing that I'm going to do to try to fill that in is you want to make sharp angles. If I come closer to it, then that fills that in. Just kind of fill in the spots that kind of make some sharper angles to fill in those close spots. I'm looking at the shapes in between the string and how big they are. So if the, these shapes are smaller and these shapes right here are bigger, so I just find a way to take my string to cut that big shape and make it smaller. So I just kind of go around doing that, making the big shapes smaller. And it's not going to be completely even, obviously. It's just more random, but I'll just try to make it semi even the thickness. And so while you're doing that, the other way to fill in this space right by the nails is just kind of as you're going around closing in the bigger shapes. Um, when you get to two nails, you just kind of go in between those two nails, but kind of from this side of one to the other side of the other, just to fill in right there that super close space. This kind of is filled in already, like that. The corners, you've got to kind of just find lots of different ways that you can wind around then. So just as I'm going around, I find a spot that needs filling in right in between. And I go in between them just to fill in that space. And again, that's only if you're planning on filling it in pretty thickly. If you're not trying planning to fill it in, I mean, you could just leave it how it is like this. That looks pretty. Um, so if you're only planning on doing it maybe this thickness of the string, then don't do what I'm doing right here because it'll make your edges too thick. It'll be filled in a lot more than the rest of it. So this is only if you are planning on filling it in about as much as I, as the sample is.
also do this thicker outline. If you want to have a more defined line, you could just do it on the outside part and then on the windows. So I'm just going to show you how to make that thick outline. First, I went on the inside, just like when you're doing the outline at the beginning. So you're going to go all the way around on the inside. And then I just have to go around that one an extra time. And then I go all the way around on the outside. Then after you do the inside and the outside, you're gonna cross. So I'm gonna go across, around, and then I'm gonna cross the other way, around. You wanna go all the way around or it might just fall right back off. Other way, around, other way, all the way around, other way, around. Okay, so now I've gone all the way around and I'm going to, at this point, I have a lot of layers, so if I have too many, I just stick the pen top, it's just open, I stick it over the nail to just push it down a little bit. If, the, if you can't get it to stay on, that might be the problem. Okay, now I'm gonna go back the other way, so make sure that you're making an X in between each nail. And I go around again, I'm making an X. So that's just filling in that empty space. So, this will be good to show you how to get it back on. So if it comes off, you just gotta get it back around. Okay, let's get that covered so it won't fall off anymore. And last one. Okay, so now I've gone all the zigzags. And now I'm gonna go around the outside straight again, just to give it a nice crisp edge. Like I said, now that I have got a ton of layers on here, it kind of falls off. So just hold it tight and pay attention. I'm going all the way around the edge, go around this one twice, and then go on the inside edge straight. Go. Now you've got a nice thick border around your edges. I have found that it's easier to tie it off if I go back to where I started so that I have something to tie it to because, I don't know, maybe I'm just horrible at tying things, but <laughs> I had a hard time tying it off. So that's why I just kept going and going until it was all done so that I could just tie it off once. Alright, so got my ends and I'm going to just put a little Elmer's glue on the ends all the way down. Tuck it under or whatever you want to do. And there we go. For the Salt Lake Temple, this is the thread that I got. It's gold! Yay! It's super different than what this is because it's metallic. It has six, six threads, but kind of two main ones. And so I pulled those apart because it's pretty hard to keep them together as you're going. But, and then I tied the ends right at the very end and then I cut it off because that knot is gonna stay there even when you um, glue it. And then I bring it up and go around this same one first just to bring it to the top. I didn't put it on my pen just because this is going to be a shorter one. 
Turn them around a few times. Feel zigzag. Had this before. Strawberry banana. Yep. Okay, tie it. Wrap this around lots of times. So it. All right, so now this one is too long, obviously, but I can't just cut it off because then it will fray and it will be harder to glue it and hide it. So I just need to tie a different knot closer down here. Now we are ready to glue these ends. So I'm gonna kinda glue them together first. The way that I like to hang projects like these is with these command um, damage free hanging strips because I don't want to put holes in my walls and because it makes them lay flat and it's easy to adjust them, you can take them off and they just work really nice.